Welcome to my channel. This is an indication of some of the things that I cover on a regular basis in my videos. If you haven't already subscribed, please feel free to do so. And don't forget to click the little bell so that you'll get notified of future videos. Please feel free to share my videos on your social media. And I hope you enjoy the video which follows. Well, hello everyone. As you can see, we're in the cabin. We're having a bit of a snowstorm. Welcome to the cabin. Sherpas have been busy for hours carrying things out to the cabin so that we can spend the night. Well, the Sherpa photos, of course, were being taken by my trail cam, and it was set up to take photographs of wildlife. So mostly what it got was the feet of the Sherpa coming and going, but it did get several quite nice photographs of my best buddy there, Angel, along with me, making the trip out and back every time I went out to the uh, cabin with more things to make the stay a little easier overnight, I guess. I haven't looked at the rest of the photographs off the trail cam. I had, the had it set up this time to take still photos rather than video, and each time it did that it was taking a burst of nine photographs. It took 851, so I'll be reviewing those later to see if it managed to capture any photographs of wildlife. I know I saw rabbit tracks and there were lots of birds around. We are getting a snowstorm, our second real snowstorm, and it's only, what is today, I guess today is the 20th? It is 21st of, of uh, November. We had our first snowstorm around the middle of November, around the 15th, and it is still on the ground. Uh, this is not meant to be a violent storm by any means, actually. The snow is coming down now. I'll show you in a second here. It's just gently falling down. We could get uh, 15 to 20 centimeters, according to the forecast. Well, I thought it would be a good chance to come out and uh, spend the night in the cabin, do a little cooking. Angel's here beside me, but I don't think you can see her in this particular shot. We have been busy, as you saw, with my, <laughs> my Sherpa act there, carrying things out here for quite a while. I think we have everything. I get all my heavy clothes off and sit down, then I realize I forgot something. But uh, I had to go today and uh, fill the gas tank that runs my Coleman cook stove in here, the camp stove. It's only one of those 20 pound um, barbecue type tanks people use on their grills, barbecues. And I, the gauge on the thing is crazy. It's been saying that it's empty since the day I put it up there four or five years ago. And I've never refilled it. This is the first time. As I say, it holds 20 pounds and the man when he filled it said it already had five pounds still inside of it, so I, I probably would have been safe to use it most of this winter, but I keep thinking that one of these days I'll be out here cooking something and, and run out of gas. When I hooked it back up, uh, the stove lit, and then it went down, 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 and shut off, and did that two or three times. I don't know what I did wrong, but I went back outside where the tank is, and uh, disconnected it and hooked it back up again, and now it seems to be working fine. So. I did something wrong the first time, I just don't know what. Well, I'm going to make an Arnie cake, an apple cake. My family's called an Arnie cake for a very good reason. The recipe was given to my mother by a dear old friend, Hazel Calder. I presume we're related back there somewhere, but I'm, genealogy is not my forte. Uh, she was a school marm. She taught my uh, mother and father in a little one-room school over on the North Road side of the island here. And she, then she taught my brother, I believe also, uh, probably in the same school that I started in. I started in a, well, it wasn't a one-room school, but there was one classroom with four grades and one teacher. Uh, Miss Hazel Calder had retired by then. Unfortunately, I didn't get to have her as a teacher. I've heard many people say wonderful things about her. People, um, it was the, the three R's type thing, but uh, not, none of this modern uh, teaching methods and all that sort of thing, but she was a, a fine old lady and a, and a great teacher. I used to love to go to her house and, and uh, talk to her. 
She passed away a number of years ago now, and I think, if I remember correctly, she was 99 when she died. I don't think she quite made it to 100. I visited her earlier that year. Uh, it's angel shaking. I visited her earlier that year, and she was just as bright and sharp. Her mind was, was incredible. She told me so many lovely old stories about what it was like when she was a teacher. She uh, uh, never married, and her brother never married, and they lived together in the family homestead that they were both born in. Um, and uh, she, I forget how many years she was retired, but I remember very well her telling me at one point that her pension was now a lot more money than she used to get when she worked. <laughs> so she was quite thrilled to be able to say that. But uh, her brother's name was Arnie, as I say, and we've always called Arnold, but we've always called this cake Arnie cake, because when Hazel gave the recipe to my mother, she said it was Arnie's favorite cake, and she always made it for him every summer or fall, whatever, when there were lots of apples available. So uh, that did it. It became Arnie cake in our family. It's very simple, um, quite easy. You don't put any icing or anything on it. It's very moist and full of apples and whatever, and quite easy to make. So we'll get started on that in, in just a minute. I get everything set up here, and we'll start making Arnie cake. Sorry about the quality of the photograph. I don't have the original. Uh, this is taken a screenshot taken from a Facebook page of old photos of Campobello Island. The photograph was taken around 1924, within a year or so, one way or the other. And as you can see, I have three people highlighted. The lower left is my mother. The center photograph is my father. And the upper right is Miss Hazel Calder, the teacher. The photograph was taken at the uh, little school on the North Road, and Hazel lived about a mile from that school. Uh, in that time, there, there were a few cars on Campobello, but the roads still were not plowed in winter, and you put the car in the barn for the winter, your Model A or a Model T Ford or something like that was about all was available anyway. And you went back to using horse and sleigh, or you walked. As I say, Hazel lived about a mile away, and she walked every morning to school and walked back home at the end of the day, and it did not matter what the weather was like. I remember my parents telling me many times that it didn't make any difference how hard it was snowing. It might have been a day when I couldn't go to school because they wouldn't put the buses on the road. They said when they were a kid, Miss Hazel called her walk, and if you got there, you were expected to get there. Uh, Hazel told me about that also many times, but she also told me about later on uh, when they built the high school. Uh, it was a consolidated school, grades 1 through 12. I, I actually went to school in that before they built another larger school with gymnasiums and everything. I was there for a few years. And uh, when they built that, the roads still were not good in the wintertime. Her father would take her in horse and sleigh on a Monday morning, and it would be about a, oh, in kilometers, 10, 15 kilometers, 10 kilometers anyway, one way. He would take her over to the village of Wilson's Beach and drop her off at the house where she boarded for the week. Uh, she would go to school, walk to school from wherever this boarding house was, and Friday evening he would come back and pick her up and take her home for the weekend. Things were different back then. <laughs> I'm saying that the picture was probably 1924, just going on my mother's age. She was two years younger than my father. It looks to me like she would have just started school there, so that would make her six years old in, in 1924. Anyway, a very interesting old photograph. I'm going to use my fancy peeler, peeler, core, or slicer, all in one motion here. And it does stick to this table out here, even though it's, an, it's another wooden, a wooden table. As usual, it leaves a little bit on the top and the bottom where the, it doesn't get the peeling off. Mm. Those little bits are tasty, though. <laughs> Uh, 
The recipe calls for three cups of apples uh, chopped into relatively small pieces here. So I won't measure them exactly, but I'm thinking three or four apples will probably do. I'll bring you back when I've finished chopping apples. I forgot to mention that the apples that I'm using are called Spartan, just because it's what I happen to have in the fridge. Any apple will do. Well, if you can hear the roar in the background, I have the camp stove, gas stove going. I'm trying to heat up the Coleman Camp oven so I can do my irony cake here. It's, it's another one of these recipes from my mother's little handwritten cookbook. And once again, she doesn't mention how long you bake it or what temperature you bake it at. It's just a list of the ingredients. Uh, I'm sure probably when Miss Hazel Calder gave her the recipe, that was the way she gave it to her too, because she was definitely an old-time baker. I will read through the ingredients because I have combined all of the dry ingredients before I left the house. So I will be adding them all at once, but I'll read through. And I'll also put this recipe, uh, my version of it anyway, below the video on YouTube. So it's one cup of sugar, white sugar, one large egg, and uh, again I'm still just getting bantam eggs, so I'm doing two eggs. Two tablespoons of shortening. I'm actually using the shortening, but if you don't have shortening, you could use margarine or butter, whatever you prefer. It's just a, the fat ingredient is two tablespoons. Three cups of chopped apples, which as you can probably see here, are already starting to turn a little brown, but that doesn't matter. There's so much cinnamon added in here, they're going to look brown anyway. One cup of flour, half teaspoon of baking soda, two and a half teaspoons of cinnamon, ground cinnamon, a half teaspoon of baking powder, and a half teaspoon of salt. And as I say, I have already combined the dry ingredients. I'm just going to mix it all at once. A good idea if you were doing it at home uh, would be to uh, beat the eggs and the sugar and the uh, shortening or butter, whatever you're using, cream that together first would be a good idea. But to make it easier to bring it out here, I already combined everything. So I will be attempting to mix it all at once, I guess. That's the shortening going in there now. Here are the dry ingredients, which is already combined. quite how to describe the cake. It's, it's not light by any means. Uh, I'm going to get a spoon, I guess, and see if I can get that off of there. to get it combined but it's very dense and I'm not sure it's supposed to be like that or not. I'm adding just a bit of milk to loosen it up anyway. So it's more like a batter. The finished product is more like a, I don't know, a square, a bar, whatever you want to call them. So this might still be what it was supposed to be like. But and maybe also if I had combined the sugar and the eggs, it would have been different. So we'll see what we get when we finish, whether we have irony cake or not, I guess. As usual, I'm having difficulty getting the little oven regulated. It was just ridiculously hot a minute ago, and I've turned the heat down, flame down. It's a 
consistency that I like better anyway. Mother's recipe didn't say to add any any milk, but I did. This is an 8 by 8 baking dish pan and uh, I, I just I buttered it. I didn't, uh, didn't bother to flour it, I buttered it. You don't turn it out of the pan anyway. I, I cut it and remove it from the pan as needed. Well, I'm aiming for a 350 degree oven. <laughs> don't know if I'll get it or not. And once again, there's no time given here, so I brought some toothpicks with me. I'll probe it with toothpicks until they come out dry to determine whether or not it's done. So I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. I keep forgetting that it gets dark so early now. It's 4 o'clock in the afternoon, but by 5 it'll be quite shady, so I finally got around to taking a little look out the door here to show you the snowstorm. As I said, a very gentle snowstorm. There's a little bit of wind. The trees are moving. But the forecast does say snow at times heavy overnight, but still it's giving an accumulation of 15 to 20 centimeters, which an average day in the Maritimes in the wintertime. But this is so early. I've seen many years when we didn't have any snow right up until Christmas and after Christmas. Mid-November we've had, the ground has been white now since the middle of the month and it's going to be whiter still. You can see that bush right there. That's the crazy rose bush that I'm always talking about. Floribunda type rose that uh, I grew from seed and if you can make out the rose hips on it there. Hopefully they come into focus, covered with snow. There they are, that's better. Amazing. There are literally thousands of those on that bush. Each cluster of, of roses, rose blossoms, is like a, well, the, the, the hips now look like a bunch of grapes, very small grapes, but there are thousands. It's a huge bush, and that's just one side of it that we're looking at there. Well, the irony cake is in the oven and it smells delicious, so here's hoping it cooks and isn't a disaster. I am going to sample something now that I made, oh, ten days, two weeks ago, I guess. The boiled cake, if you watched that uh, particular video, or war cake, whichever you want to call it. If you hear anything in the background, I just put Angel's dinner down to her and she's decided she's going to have dinner. Uh, I have cut the boiled cake, fruit cake, and it is very nice and moist. I just wanted to, I said I would sample it online when I sample it. So. Unfortunately, this is where I have to be mean to Angel. It's solid full of raisins, of course, and dogs are not supposed to have raisins. To which Angel says, that's all right, Dad, I won't tell anybody, you know. <laughs> Uh, I didn't realize that until my the vet that I use now told me. I think my other dog and probably Angel had raisins prior to me learning this, but dogs are not supposed to eat raisins, so she won't get any of the fruitcake. Nice and moist and chewy. All those raisins in there that were plumped up when you boiled them, now that it's been wrapped for a couple of weeks, they're giving back their moisture into the cake. I cut the first slice off when I was back at the house and the, the heel or the butt end, whatever you want to call it, that was kind of dry. But the second slice here is wonderful. So if you haven't made your boiled cake yet, I've had several people tell me that they're going to try it and several people that have tried it. So and several people that have had a similar recipe in their family. I'm not certain if it would have begun in Canada. It probably came from the UK. Um, they were much more severely rationed than we were here, being an island under invasion, or they didn't get invaded, but surrounded by um, foreign and military and navy and whatever that was sinking a lot of the 
commercial shipping that was going to the UK, so they, they were under severe um, rationing and uh, a lot of nice recipes were developed uh, by an agency of the government that uh, you could do without having too many of the items that were heavily rationed. So this probably came over here from, from the UK. But it's the taste of Christmas for me. My mother always made it. And I'm having it with Echinacea tea. My go-to thing to fight off a cold. And I swear it works. I don't know if I'm coming down with a cold or not. I wished I had counted how many sneezes I did in succession a couple of hours ago. I'm sure it was close to 20. <laughs> I, I've been a little bit congested with me. It could be allergies. Um, when you close the house up, windows all get closed this time of year and whatever. I, I usually get quite stuffed up. I, Allergic to dust. Shouldn't live in my house if you're allergic to dust. Anyway, I'm finishing this. This is my first dessert. I'll have Arnie cake after I've had dinner this evening, but this is an afternoon break at four o'clock here. I'm having a cup of echinacea tea and some boil cake. So I'll bring you back shortly when the Arnie cake comes out of the oven. Well, the marvels of modern technology. <laughs> when I first uh, was out here at the cabin and could not get a Wi-Fi signal from the house and we didn't have cell phones at the time and now we have a, a good strong cell tower and I have an iPhone it's my iPhone, iPhone what, iPhone 7, iPhone 8, something to ask me <laughs> it's relatively new, I've only had that particular one a few months and still can't remember what it's called using it as a hotspot anyway I can have my iPad uh, link to it as an internet connection. I'm not quite sure I understand what's happening there, but this is the current uh, weather that's happening in the area. This larger island that you can see here is Grand Manan, and at times well, this is cycling through a three-hour cycle. Right over in here is where I am on a little island called Campobello about 10 miles off the shore of, of Grand Manan, and as you can see that's still a very light storm. Uh, if it was a heavy storm it would be much darker blue and the coloring of it and whatever. So it's very gentle. It's beautiful though. I'll give you another shot outside here in a second before it gets dark because it's, it's just hanging on the trees. It's very lovely. This is just taken through the window where I was sitting there earlier. The window that was behind me. I guess you can still see a little bit of the snow coming down, but it's it's very fine flakes and it is accumulating, but not not any great amount, not yet anyway. We get the at time heavy bit in the middle of the night; it will accumulate faster, I guess. The vines that you can see down across the the window there is it's a wild grapevine, but if you watch my videos from a few years ago, I. I propagated it and put it in many places around my property and I think I have at least two growing growing on the cabin here. It produces a lot of small grapes and I, I don't harvest them or anything. They're for the birds, but the birds really enjoy them. And I assume like that rose bush, the birds are spreading the rose bush around. I assume that they're probably spreading this wild grape vine around. It's, it's a, a grape vine that was uh, gathered along the St. John River further up in the province and originally propagated by a nursery up a, a fair distance north of us, three or four hours, four hours at least drive north of us at Corn Hill, Corn Hill Nursery, Bob Osborne. Um, and I bought one from him a number of years ago and it, uh, I actually lost it and, and thought I, it died in one winter. I thought, well, that's it, I don't have it. A number of years later, I found it growing up a spruce tree. So the birds had put seeds at the base of this spruce tree, and that's the one that I took the cuttings from and moved it around to five or six more locations. So it would be more difficult for me to lose it in the future. I guess it's about time that I prove that Angel is with me. She just had her supper early been a change in Angel's eating habits. She used to be that I would put food down for her and be three or four hours before she'd eat it. In the last couple of months, 
food hits the bowl and she eats it. Hunch you up. As we're out here in this cabin thing again. <laughs> I bought a new sleeping bag just to use out here at the cabin. A lightweight sleeping bag. Even though I only use the cabin or sleep in the cabin in the winter time, I don't want a heavy bag. I had a heavy sleeping bag uh, that I used well, up until now and it's just too warm in here with that wood stove even <laughs> you do in the silly rate even if uh, um, I dare take it out or she will what do you want? It's being bad I won't take it out but it folds up to go in that tiny little bag so. Even if it's extremely cold outside, is what I was going to say, like minus 20 or so. Um, with the wood stove, it's t-shirt weather in here. And today it's only like zero degrees Celsius outside. So it's uh, it quit getting quite warm. I have all three windows, the one on the door and the two windows open partially to bring some cooler air in. thinking the lighter sleeping bag would be a lot more comfortable than getting inside of the heavy one that I was using. Also, when I'm in the cabin, I'm always talking about what I'm reading. And I've, I've got a new author, new to me, that I've gone crazy over in the last two or three months, I guess. I Maybe you all know about him. I guess it's a him. It's P.F. Ford. I haven't uh, done any research to see what the PF stands for, English author who writes mysteries. And I think they're very well written. Um, they're very inexpensive uh, in ebooks. So I don't know if that means that he's just, he or she is not a uh, very popular author yet or what's going on. But you can buy them in uh, box sets, it calls it well. A box set without a box. It's an E version of the... My dog is driving me crazy. <laughs> She's determined that she wants that sleeping bag for some reason. <laughs> Can't have it. It's not a toy. <laughs> You're silly. Uh, box sets, as I say, without a box, they're, they're, they're e-books. But a set of four of, of the books, seven or eight dollars, and I'm now on my second set of four. I think I'm pretty much finished with the second book in, the, in that second set of four books. I really like them. They're very well written. Um, I, I don't know. I'm not a great literary critic, I guess, but I put him right up there with P.D. James and some of my other favorite British mystery writers. So why they're so inexpensive, I don't know, but on Amazon, um, seven or eight dollars a box set of four, and there's at least two box sets of four. I haven't looked to see if there's a third one that I can can get after I finish these or not. They're called the Norman uh, Slater and Norman mystery books. Um, Slater and Norman are, are two uh, English policemen, and it's kind of interesting what's happening in this book. I don't want to spoil it for you, but Norman has retired and come back as a uh, civilian employee. And now it's sounding like Slater might retire. So I don't know if in future books they're going to be private eyes or what's happening. But they're very good mysteries. I have difficulty figuring out who's who until the until the very end. So that, that's what I like in you know, a good mystery book anyway. Well, I can really smell the uh, irony cake in the oven, the spices, of course, and the apples. It smells really good. I tested it just a few minutes ago. It's been in there now for 50 minutes. Um, but the, uh, the, the temperature is difficult to regulate. I've got it up to around 350 now. It had dropped to around 300 degrees. It was starting to rise, but a toothpick was put in it was coming out wet and sticky. So we'll check it again in a second here and see whether the arty cake is ready to come out of the oven. Quarter to five, and it's getting shadier all the time, so take one last look out at the trees in front of the cabin here, looking out through the door. The next one I'll show you, I guess, will have to be in the morning. The snow is still coming down, but it is very fine right now. Um, 
not large flakes at all. So, But as I said before, it is not meant to be a major snowstorm, I guess. It's just a typical 20 centimeter snowstorm, which isn't anything much here. And zero degrees here, we don't even think of that as being cold this time of year. If you're in Australia or somewhere, I think you probably would freeze to death, at least in, in uh, northern Australia, where it would be the hottest. You would uh, be very, very, very cold at zero, but zero degrees here is a mild day until next April sometime. And there is Arnie cake out of the oven. It's very soft, which it would be anyway because it's very moist, but it is coming away from the edges, if you can see that here and here, and a toothpick inserted in it comes out clean even though it is very soft, so I'm, I'm saying that it's done, I don't want to burn it up. It's been in there now for just about an hour, but as I said, the temperature went up and down and I regulated it. I think if you cook it in your oven at 350 Fahrenheit, do as I have to. You have to check it, but probably a half hour to 40 minutes and it would be done. So I can't wait for that to cool and we'll have some with a cup of tea later this evening. I have a selection of root vegetables that I'm going to have for supper, along with a veggie sausage or two. I peeled these before I left the house, once again just to make it easier out here. Potato, carrot, and rutabaga, or turnip, whichever you want to call it. We call it turnip here, it's called rutabaga, or swede, and other places. These are my own, the, the carrots and the potatoes are bought in. I didn't show my rutabaga harvest this year when I finally brought it in. I waited until, well it must have been late October I guess, until we'd had a few heavy frosts before I pulled them. Um, I only got one or two that I would consider market size, the kind that you would see in a shop. Uh, I got 12 all together, all quite usable. That's in there, well, several pieces of it, but that's one of the real small ones. But what I'm so pleased this year, they are so sweet and delicious. I left them, of course, as I say, until the frost. You're supposed to do that. That sweetens them. Do the same thing, I guess, with parsnips. Um, but the ones that I grew last year were mammoth. They weighed like 10 pounds for a rutabaga because I started them far too early. These ones, I think, were transplanted a little too late, which is why I didn't get a better size on a lot of them. Um, the bed that I transplanted them in, I grew peas in first, and I waited until it was almost mid-July before the peas were finished. So. Next year they'll have their own dedicated bed so I can transplant my seedlings into them in in early July and, and hopefully get a you know a few more that are a decent size. But these are delicious. I'm very pleased with them this year. So I'm gonna be cooking these on the wood stove. My Yodel wood stove. So I haven't got it you know raging hot or anything, so I'm thinking it'll probably take quite a while, so I'm starting them now. I suspect it would be at least an hour. Took quite a while before they come up to the boil. Well, the vegetables are done and I'm starting to cook my veggie sausages here. I think I threw the packaging away. These have been, each one is individually wrapped in, in plastic inside of the cardboard packaging so I've, I think I threw the cardboard part away so I can't think of the, the brand name. Um, I've already eaten one or two and they're quite nice. They're apple and grain and I presume some soy um, product in there, some soy protein. Or of course there's protein in grain as well but they, they are a, a vegetarian or maybe even a vegan um, version of protein. And I really like the flavor. There's, they have a natural smoke, it says. I remember that much on the packaging. So they're, they're quite nice. Once they're browned up a little bit here, I'll sit down and have my dinner. The vegetables have cooked quite nicely. I'm just keeping them in the hot water over on the, the camp stove there. I haven't got any flame under them or anything, but 
I won't drain them until I'm ready to eat them. That way it'll keep them quite hot in here. Such as it is, dinner is served. I love this sort of thing, actually. Root vegetables seem to be my favorite. Mm. And the sausage is very different. I like them. I don't know if I'd want a steady diet of them. It's kind of sweet. I suppose that's because it has apple in it. But it's quite tasty. Well, I'm listening to the evening news on the radio, but I have to shut it off when I talk to you. <laughs> or I once again will get in trouble with the copyright police. If they find any radio signal in the background somewhere, you'll get challenged. So I will bring you back when we try the Arnie cake. Well, Arnie cake is served with a cup of green tea. I drink green tea in the evening. Green tea has caffeine, but it has less caffeine than black tea. And I find if I drink green tea, I'm actually able to sleep. I'm trying to show you this is very moist. And more like a, I don't know, a square or a brownie or something than it is a cake. It's, it doesn't rise a great deal. And I love it. It tastes just like I remembered it tasting. I think if you're if you're going to make it, um, the little splash of milk that I added certainly didn't hurt anything. If uh, yours, when you're mixing the eggs and with the sugar and everything, if it if it is dry like mine mine ended up being, I'm not quite sure why. I think you could add a little splash of milk and that certainly doesn't hurt anything. Perhaps my two small eggs still aren't big enough. One large egg might have might have had more moisture. An angel can even have a little piece to try this. No raisins in this. We managed to get the sleeping bag out of the bag and she's over there on the sofa now laying on top of it all curled up. I don't know what her fascination was with it when I tried to open that bag up. Whether she thought it was a toy or, or what, but she definitely was interested in what was in the, in the bag that the sleeping bag was in. Well, I'm going to finish my dessert here and I'll bring you back later again this evening sometime before I go to bed for the night. We'll have another look at the storm. Well, I hope you haven't already Googled. <laughs> I did. And uh, P.F. Ford is Peter Ford. And that's a photograph of Peter. He lives in Wales. I think, he, I think it said that he published his first book when he was 50 years old. Uh, by self-publishing. He had tried to publish several times over the years. Books that he had written had been turned down by every publisher that he went to. That seems to have happened to a lot of famous writers. I don't know if Peter Ford will ever become famous or not, but uh, it seems to be a common story in the background of a, a lot of very famous writers that they were turned down and turned down and turned down until finally someone accepted them. I don't know if he's still self-publishing or if he now has a publisher, but he lives in Wales. Um, according to this, probably recently married. And he must be a good man. He has four rescued dogs that he lives with his wife and four rescued dogs in, in Wales. So I just got my one rescued baby here <laughs> who has calmed down. She's now laying on top of the sleeping bag, but I don't know what she really thought might have been in that bag, but she was quite excited about it. Well, I'm just about to do some reading. Uh, the storm, I don't, I wouldn't say it's any, any worse. It might be snowing a little harder, but we've had a little bit of an increase in, in the wind, but just listening to the weather report on the radio, it's still giving the same thing. It's, there's nothing spectacular about this storm. It's just an average 
average snowstorm. If we get some heavier snow, I'll point the camera out the door and shine a flashlight out there, see if we can get a look at it. But gonna read for a while. It's now what 7:30 almost, I guess. This is my shot off into the dark here. Don't know how much of it's showing really, because there's no outside light here, and I'm using a flashlight to try to illuminate things a little bit. Yeah, it's snowing a little harder than it had been, but it certainly has accumulated this several inches down now. But it's still a pretty gentle storm. I heard the snow plow just a short time ago again up on the road here. I don't know if you're picking that up in the background or not, but you can hear the foghorn at Hit Harbor. Uh, that's about uh, five, six kilometers from here. And the actual horn is pointed off into the into the ocean. It isn't pointed in this direction, but you can still hear it here quite quite loud. It's ten o'clock, and we're just about to turn in for the night. I just finished my uh, latest book. Very good. I still like them very much. I think I have two more that I can read in this this collection of them anyway. So I will see you in the morning. Well, the snow stopped at some time during the night. Never did get any, any wind or anything with it, or nothing much anyway. And so far, it's a very beautiful white morning. I think we probably got close to what they predicted, somewhere between 15 and 20 centimeters. The sun's just, well, sun probably hasn't quite risen, or it's just about to rise, I guess, 7.30. That's just about the time that the sun comes up. But it's a heavy, cloudy day with a few a few breaks up there in the sky. Uh, I've been listening to the radio. Uh, school children will be disappointed. School is on. Buses are delayed by an hour. So they, they at least get a, an extra hour for breakfast this morning, I guess. But it wasn't bad enough that they're canceling classes anywhere in the province. However, they've changed the forecast again. Tonight we're supposed to get more snow. I don't think anything is as much as this one, but more snow overnight tonight, and then it will turn cold. Um, Friday morning, I guess, it should be, it's the 23rd, uh, minus 13, and they said with the wind that will feel like minus 23, <laughs> and this is November. What do you suppose January and February are going to be like? Well, I'm about to get my breakfast ready here. And after that, we'll pack up and go back to the house. I suspect a shot looking back at the cabin is going to be quite nice. With all the snow on the trees, it was a, a gentle storm, so there no wind, so the snow did not uh, fall down off the trees, at least not yet. This is an enlargement of a photograph that I took the first winter that I had the cabin. That would have been the winter of 2012-2013. And I didn't paint the cabin until the following summer, so it uh, has a more rustic look than it has right now. It's now painted a gray color with white trim. But I suspect we get out this morning that uh, there will be a similar shot you can take with the snow on the trees behind it. So we'll see in a few minutes, I guess, or an hour or so when I'm ready to go home. Well, yesterday before I came out here, I baked a loaf of... Uh, sourdough, multi-green sourdough bread. The loaf that I make is always too large, so I, I uh, cut it in half, I freeze half, and use the other half, I guess. Well, I've got the coffee ready, not ready, the coffee is on the wood stove, waiting for it to start to perk. I got my toast ready to go, so breakfast shouldn't be much longer. Hopefully you can hear me above all the noise that the propane stove makes. But, uh, what's that old adage about a watch kettle never boils? Well, I think that applies to a percolator too. It seems to me like I've been waiting a long time for the percolator to start perking. But it is perking and I've got the gas turned on so I can do my toast. Finally, I remembered I took down the smoke detector. 
I've never made toast in here yet, but what the smoke detector didn't go off. So. Well, it didn't take too long, and breakfast is ready, I guess. Some nice hot coffee. Tastes different to me because I'm used to eating espresso, but it's a good strong cup of coffee anyway. A couple of scrambled eggs. Mm. Very good. And the toast, multi-grain sourdough toast, toasted quite nicely on the on the stove. <laughs> no no fire alarms. Remember to take the smoke detector down. And black currant jam, my favorite jam. Well, once I finish breakfast, I'll start packing up to return to the house. Sun still isn't out, and according to the forecast, we're supposed to be mostly cloudy today anyway. get some shots of the outside of the cabin to close this video off as we return home to start editing and see if we can get the video up on YouTube for this weekend. Well things have changed since that previous photograph that I showed you. A large bit of shrubbery off to the left is the rose bush, which was a tiny little thing then. And off to the right are my hazel trees, which were tiny little twigs back then. So the view of the cabin isn't quite the same. But it is a winter wonderland out here, I guess you'd have to call it. And we are getting a few sort of blue patches in the sky. We may get some sun, even though they predicted that we wouldn't. Well, this is a side view of the cabin, I guess, showing the two large windows on the south side. But I wanted you to see the amount of snow that's accumulated on the roof. There was a bit there yesterday that hadn't blown off from the last storm, but uh, considerably more today. It was one of those soft snowstorms, very little wind. So all of this light, fluffy snow is still resting on the branches. And we're due to get more tonight. I guess not as much as we had last night, but they say more snow tonight before it turns bitter cold for the weekend. Well, I think that's probably the last clip. Thank you very much for watching. I'll get this put together and see if I can get it up on YouTube. Well, I thought that would be the last clip, but I'm back at the house and I have to show you the activity at the bird feeder. <laughs> I only started feeding the birds, oh, two, maybe three days ago. Um, they tell you not to feed them in summer anymore. There's some sort of a virus that is spread at bird feeders. But once the weather gets cold enough, it's safe to start feeding them again. And since I started, it only took an hour or two after I got the, the feed out. They must have been just waiting for me to put it out. But they've been here in great numbers ever since, anyway. I made a mistake with my feeder out at the uh, cabin. I would, usually I, I take it down in the summertime because of where it is. It's on a post and it's in an area where I garden and have to frequently get in around it. So I take it down and put it back up in the fall. Well, I forgot. <laughs> and winter arrived much earlier than I thought it was going to. If we get a lot of snow, I'll, I'll just dig a hole in the snow and put it up in the snow out there. But right now, I don't have a feeder out at the uh, cabin, anyway. Well, this really does end this video. <laughs> and once again, I'll say thank you for watching. If you see a few leaves in the foreground, they're probably not showing up as green. But that's one of my lemon trees. And it's being jiggled back and forth like you'd think there was wind in here. But it's the, I have a heat pump on the wall here that uh, so far is the only thing I've used so far this year to heat the house at all is the inverter, the heat pump. So it blows out forced air. 
Well, thank you once again. I'm glad you're watching the video. Hope you enjoyed this visit at the cabin.